And actually, we just clicked over to 1.30. So I'd like to officially welcome everybody to our January monthly meeting. We have a great program today for everyone that's all about Market Street. Uh, with the excitement of it reopening here in a week or two, um, we wanted to be sure to talk a little bit about where, where it's been and where it's going. So we have a great panel of speakers today um, that are going to give you a great overview of where it's been and where it's going, and we hope you enjoy it. Uh, a couple little pieces of business I'd like to take I'd like to take care of before we get started. Mike, could you mute? Mike, could you put yep. yourself on mute for a moment? Pardon me? Put yourself on mute for a moment. Okay. We're getting an echo. So I apologize to that for those listening. So a couple pieces of business I just want to take care of before we get started. For those of you that are newer to Zoom, if you move your cursor over the screen, you'll notice there's a bunch of little boxes pop up along the bottom. We um, are going to encourage everybody, if you have a question, to please use the Q&A section and write in, type in your question there, and we will be having a, a Q&A session after all the speakers have talked, and we'll get to as many of your questions as we can. If you want to comment or say hi to somebody that's joined in on the program, please use the chat feature to do that. And when you do that, be sure to check all panelists and all attendees. It's a little drop down that pops up in the chat box. Um, otherwise, the only people that are going to see it are the panelists, okay? Um, we have a bit of exciting news um, to, to give you guys today. Um, last fall, uh, our membership was kind enough to fund a complete revamp of our website. And COVID slowed us down a little bit, but it didn't stop us. And I'm really excited to announce that our new website is going to go live on Monday, this coming Monday, at 12 noon. So we hope that you guys will all take a few minutes this next week to check it out and give us your feedback. Um, we're very excited uh, to be able to include new offerings. We are still working on a few pages there, but there's a lot of great information um, and we hope you'll find it easier to use. So please let us know what you think. Um, but for the program today, I'm gonna turn you over to Mike Monahan, um, who our vice chair, who is going to introduce our the program and our panelists. Thank you, Heather. It's a pleasure to be here today, and we welcome you just like Heather did. I'm, I'm very happy everybody's here to join us on one of our monthly programs. Like Heather said, down the road, we hope to reinitiate uh, our, uh, our normal meetings, which is in person. Uh, we don't know when that'll be, uh, but down the road, it will occur at some point in time. And like Heather said, it's, it's exciting today. We're gonna be talking about Market Street and the people we have to speak with you today, um, are gonna inform you about some things you may or may not know, depending on how long you've been in the Redding or Shasta County area. <clears throat> but uh, we're gonna start with um, one of our employees, Jay Thompson. And uh, he's, uh, Jay has worked for the Shasta Historical Society for 11 years. Um, he was born and raised in Redding, like most of his past family. He's a pioneer, he has come from a pioneer family. And many of you have been around Redding for a long time. Uh, remember the name Thompson? You remember, remember a clothing store and a lot of other things about the Thompson family. And so we're, it's a pleasure to introduce Jay. He has a, a slideshow for you going back and talking about Market Street and how it began. So Jay, it's all yours, my man. Jay, please unmute yourself. Uh, it's take two. Uh, <laughs> Hi everybody, I'm Jay, I'm, as Mike introduced, thank you very much. I'm the research librarian here and it's really not a job for extroverts or people who do public speaking. So it takes me a little bit out of my comfort zone which is something that this whole uh, pandemic deal has done to us and it's maybe a slightly a silver lining a bit because it really does push us in to do other things. And so um, before I start, I, I am gonna run a slideshow. Um, of Market Street, but it's a no particular, I'm not commenting on the on the slides, it's just something to watch other than a talking head on the screen. Mm -hmm. And it was uh, it was from a previous program a couple years ago, 
that was on Market Street that we did. And it's it was on a DVD here. And I believe Charlie Williams, our, our board member and great videographer, um, put it together. But it's funny because it was called Reading Now and Then, or Then and Now. But now the now part is then because it's from a couple years ago and it's history. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's the way history is. It just keeps moving along. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share the screen now and just talk over the slides and uh, you hope you enjoy the slides. I, I think they're neat, but I'm not commenting on the slides or anything. I just got my talk here. So let's try this. Share. Let's see here. See if that gets them playing. All right. Market Street. I'm more or less reading what I've written down because there's so much and I don't want to forget something and uh, too much to memorize. But Market Street is built upon the dispossessed land of the Native American Wintu tribe. That's uh, a, a land acknowledgement that we're starting to do with the historical societies and museums just so we have a truthful, complete history. And as uh, I was hearing the other day, as President Biden stated, if if we must remember if we are to heal. So we'll go on from there. But Market Street came into being with the beginning of Reading itself, which did not exist before 1872. That's when the railroad arrived from the South. The railroad laid out the town within a mile and one half square they possessed at that time. And they named the streets South, East, West, and then uh, by county in order of uh, you know, as you come up Pine Street, it's Butte, Tehama, Shasta. Those are the counties. And, and then they also named Market and Pine Street. And it was unique in that way that it was uh, laid out by the railroad. That's how it developed. It wasn't because it was near some water or a spring or had some other feature. It was completely because of the railroad. As opposed to like a gold rush town, there's essentially no development in this geographic area of Reading until the railroad. There was the Diesel Horse Farm down by Diesel Horse Bridge and the Oliver Farm, which was down by Turtle Bay, and the Canyon House, which was uh, a cutoff there of one of Ventura that took the gold miners out to uh, Old Shasta. It had a nickname of Poverty Flat and was rather swampy and known for malaria and sat, sat for over 20 years uninhabited for the most part by white people from the beginning of the gold rush with no structures or any interest for miners who flocked to the west side out to Horsetown and Clear Creek, uh, the Clear Creek diggings. And the fact that Reading was even chosen as a railroad station was almost a last minute decision by the railroad who had planned to go to Shasta because that was the county seat and that's where everything was. And they were gonna go uh, cut off up by Buenaventura but decided due to the steeper terrain and some last minute dealings with, with that Reading, which they named after their land agent would be what they would do. Reading became the railhead as the Northern terminus with a turntable and, and that uh, spurred, uh, pun intended, economic growth as a transportation hub. The Modoc War of 1812 saw much freight being shipped there and continued by wagons, but not necessarily Market Street yet, but rather California Street due to its proximity to the railroad. Commerce gravitated there with hotels like the Depot Hotel and the first big general store built by C.C. Bush who moved in from Shasta and later became known as the father of Reading with his various endeavors and contributions. By the time Reading was one month old, there were 23 buildings under construction and 100 lots were sold at 1700 a piece. It wasn't until a series of fires on California Street and just the need to expand almost like urban sprawl that Market Street started to re really develop in, into what would be like a main street of a, of, of a town. By the 1880s, Market Street was developing into the main area with the relocating of the county seat from Shasta, which is quite a battle and a story and a, you know, a story you know, for another time. But it's interesting to think that Shasta is the way it is now, that it was one time the center of all government and the center of the county and had the biggest population. I, you know, I think people who are new to Reading in the area might be surprised to hear that. 
But with the county seat as well as incorporation came a new courthouse in the, in the beginning of many new buildings on Market Street, this time in, prick, in brick. The Odd Fellows being one that has survived as well as this building. Many of the brick buildings built on Market Street from this time, the 1880s through the first of the 20th century lasted well into the 20th centuries and were demolished for the downtown mall. We're of the design that is being followed now with the multi-story uh, buildings with businesses on the ground floor and uh, residences or offices on the upper floor. From the 1880s till demolished in the 60s, that was the look of Market Street. The street from the beginning was very mixed use with homes, which, is, uh, which was C.C. Bush's, uh, where the Reading Hotel is. He had his home there, he's the father of Reading, but it's incorrectly stated many times that it was the first house of Reading, but that's how history gets uh, rewritten sometimes accidentally, because what he built was the first structure not the first house, but many times in the history books, you'll see the C.C. Bush built the first house. Um, and still there's houses on Market Street that we know of, you know, by the North Market Street Bridge. So we get that look from, uh, from way back. The arrival of the first automobile in 1906 began a huge change in the look of Market Street, as you can well imagine as blacksmith shops and livery stables were replaced by gas stations and garages. Um, I'd even heard that the, the, the gas station next to uh, the Cascade Theater, it's in that painting and drawing of the Cascade Theater, you know, all when it's raining and whatnot, that, that gas station did more business than any other gas station in Northern California for many years. Uh, the arrival of the first automobile, as I was saying, and uh, Market Street was not even paved till 1919. That was just a little over a hundred years ago. So that's how much it's grown. Highway 99 arrived in 1912, which is when I looked it up, which is a lot earlier than I thought. And at times at that very beginning, there was only two or three cars passing through a day. That changed great, greatly as the car culture increased. But to think that every car like on I-5 going up and down California now would go through downtown, it's just a, kind of an amazing thought that there was that much traffic at one time. As Shasta Dam was built the 40s, the 40s, in the 40s, Reading grew in with it suburbs of a sort like Bonneview and Tobias Tracks. Uh, so businesses started locating closer to homes. But downtown continued to flourish as many people now remember during the 50s and 60s. There was the busy sidewalks and at night the cruise, which was like, you know, American graffiti. And that was like the biggest problem downtown. There was, you didn't, there weren't the gangs or the transients or anything. And, but the cruise became so large that they, uh, there were signs up saying, you know, no cruising, and uh, there was laws passed as well. At that time, all the way into 19, early 70s, the police station was in Old City Hall, if you can imagine that. You know, Old City Hall where the art gallery is, that was the police station all the way to the 70s, and since then there's been one other police station, and now the new one as well. But that took a while to sink in. The 60s saw the biggest and worst change for downtown as it did for many downtowns across the nation. As the freeway arrived and divert, diverted traffic from downtown and created the need for revitalization and reinvention. The irony is that what had happened to Shasta with the railroad coming in and, and diverting everybody from Shasta was now happening to Reading as the main traffic was on I-5. And that gets us up to the mall. <laughs> and I'll stop hey, this there. Thank you very, very much. You bet Great you. Job. Great job. Right. Mike, yeah. before you get started, could speakers please speak up? Okay. One of our um, panelists speakers. is having a hard time hearing people. Okay, no problem. Speakers speak up, um, including me, Heather. <laughs> <laughs> okay, our next speaker, thank you, Jay. Our next speaker is going to be Larry Morgan. Now, Larry's uh, 
been on panels for us before, and we can't tell you, Larry, how much we appreciate you coming in again today and doing this for our, for our members. <clears throat> Larry has worked for the city of Reading for 30 years in the planning department and redevelopment agency. He oversaw as the point person for downtown revitalization starting in the mid 90s. Larry also oversaw the adoption of the first downtown Reading specific plan. He managed the downtown mall roof removal project. He retired as a redevelopment manager in 2009, and he's still involved in downtown revitalization. He's the chair of the Viva Downtown, Riverfront Playhouse board member, Cascade Theater Advisory Committee member. I, I can't think of too many people more involved uh, in the city of Reading or Shasta County than Larry Morgan. Larry, looking Thank forward you. to it. He's gonna be talking about the mall in the 1970s. He's the man. <laughs> Thank you, Mike, I appreciate it. And uh, thanks for having me back. I love uh, I love talking. I love, to, I love talking to folks uh, with the historical society. Great audience, uh, great bunch of people, and you do important work for downtown, obviously in the community. So uh, always love to participate. Um, so um, Jay did a great job. You brought me. You brought us basically up to the mall construction, which as most folks know, happened in the uh, 60s and uh, early 70s. The mall was built in, in a couple of phases. Um, and it was, you know, Reading was kind of a, a leading, um, leading the country. I mean, we were one of the first communities that actually kind of enclosed or covered their main street to create a climate controlled space, which was kind of, you know, uh, you know, edgy thinking back, you know, back in the 60s. It was kind of, it was a new thing and a lot of communities across the country did it, you know, to the tune of something like 300 uh, plus communities actually in one form or another covered their main streets and created a shopping mall. And, you know, at this time, you got to remember shopping malls are the new hip thing in the, you know, in the suburbs. Um, and in fact, the, the irony of the construction project for doing the downtown mall is that at the time, just as we were opening the downtown mall after the big redevelopment project, we were, the city was approving the plans for the Mount Shasta Mall, which unfortunately over time siphoned a lot of the retail out of downtown because people wanted to be closer to I-5. Uh, so we, <laughs> we were kind of leading, you know, the leading edge in one point, at one, in one aspect, and then, you know, really cutting our nose off on, in, you know, on the other side. That was, uh, it was unfortunate, but you know, the, the mall was a unique project. Um, you know, you look at uh, the photos, if Blake, if you want to run some of those photos in the background, you know, everybody knows the concrete columns that were in the street that, uh, you know, basically were the support structure for the roof that joined all of these individual properties together under one, literally under one roof. <clears throat> And then, you know, then you add the, you, you know, you close the street, you add the, the entrances, the doors, and you have a, you know, in the heat of Reading in the summer, you have a climate controlled space. And it was very effective for quite a while. You know, Dickers was a great, you know, a popular store, Thompson's just outside the mall. All, you know, all of the stores that you, you know, the, the old timers know about in, in the mall, it was a, it was a hopping place for quite a while. Um, it just couldn't stand the competition from the Mount Shasta Mall, uh, you know, and they had their their own centralized retail management strategy. You know, everybody was on one page. All the owners were doing the same thing, marketing, advertising, hours of operation. But in the downtown mall, you had independent property owners kind of looking at it from their perspective differently. So it was, it was um, a difficult proposition at best, but for a while it did work. Um, but in the mid '90s, as um, the mall began transitioning to from retail and service to to more office use uh, storage space, um, you know it was starting to suffer and decline, and something had to happen. And so the the city council, uh, along with a lot of support and and um, pushing from downtown business and property owners. You know, the Dugan Bars, the Bob Dickers, you know, the Mike Arnolds, the, the Hammonds, or the Reading Books, or those folks came to the city and said, we want to, we want to work with the city to create a plan that can show where we can put our money in downtown and, and uh, we can start to bring about a revitalization of this, of this space. 
And so that led uh, in the early 90s to the first uh, downtown specific plan. And then ultimately a few years later to the adoption of, of a more formal uh, specific plan in 2001. And you know, one of the huge projects, you know, the, the, the thinking was that the downtown suffered from about every impediment you could think of. It had a railroad going right through the middle of it. It had a, a couplet system of one-way streets going around the mall, which was like a giant, a giant speed bump in the middle of downtown. Of you know that just that just created a clog, um, and it needed to be opened up. And so, the number one priority of that downtown specific plan was to remove the roof, get at least get the roof structure out of the way, so that individual property owners could then uh, develop property or sell it to somebody that el- that wanted to develop it. But while it was all under this one massive roof structure, no individual property owner could do anything with their space without, you know, impacting an, an adjoining space. So it became very, you know, we were just stuck in the mud uh, until something happened. And fortunately, I know, uh, I know Gary Lewis is probably online somewhere listening to this, I hope. But, uh, you know, Gary and, the, and Shasta College, you know, got involved with the city and uh, and said that they would be interested in building their uh, health sciences and university center on the old Payless uh, store site if the city would agree to removing the roof uh, adjacent to that space and kind of opening up that that uh, street uh, not not necessarily to to vehicular traffic but at least to foot traffic to open it up and we were fortunate you know Mike um, um, uh, she's Mike or a, um, uh, Michael Warren was the city manager. Had a great city council um, that were uh, very forward thinking, and um, we got the okay to move forward. So, starting in like 2003, we began taking the roof off the mall in two phases. It took five years. We did it in two stages, um, and um, you know much. Uh, much to my chagrin, we were really on a roll in 2008, and then the recession came and hit. And that pretty much stopped the momentum for moving forward beyond getting the roof off the mall. There, you know, no developers were knocking down the city's door looking to uh, buy property and, and create, uh, create some new development. Um, but at least we got that accomplished uh, at that time. And it really set the stage for what's coming next, which is the work that K2 Development and McConnell Foundation, you know, you know, Steve uh, Bade's involvement and ascension to a position at the city that allows him to be a hands-on administrator in downtown. Those are huge things. And I, when we, uh, when we did the groundbreaking for the K2 project for Market Center, I told you know, I, I spoke at that and I told folks in the audience, and I meant it sincerely, this was the game changer that we've been waiting years for. This was the big one. And I, I still believe that. And I'm really super happy and glad that the, the Knott brothers and family got involved and all the other folks. It's just a, you know, a, a perfect storm of, of great opportunity here. And, and so... Anyway, that, I think hopefully that answers, uh, or at least gets people up to where we are sort of today. Uh, and uh, obviously we have plenty of time for questions and answers afterwards. So that's it, Michael. <laughs> Larry, thank you so much. You're welcome. Your expertise in those areas are pretty obvious here. Listening to you, when you go over that stuff, your insights and so forth are very helpful for the program. and has been for the city of Reading as well. Thank you very much, Larry. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> um, Daniel Knott and Steve Bade, I'll introduce them in just a second. They'll be with us on video in just a second. Um, and that will be shown to you by uh, our last speaker, Blake Fisher, and I'll get to him soon. Daniel Knott um, and Steve are going to cover the last 20 years to the present day. And uh, Daniel Knott is executive uh, officer of K2 Development Companies. He was born and raised in Reading. Went to college at Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. He was a business, business administration and finance and accounting degree. After college, he joined the family business with his father and brother. He successfully started K2 Properties and DBA Invest Property Management. And he enjoys being civilly 
engage with his community. That's Daniel Knott. Also uh, in, the pro in the video um, covering the last 20 years to the present will be Steve Bade, who's the deputy city manager involved with the housing and community development department. He runs a monthly downtown collaborative and he's now a retired law enforcement officer. So um, we're gonna have a little video uh, covering uh, those two gentlemen. And so when you're ready, Blake, we're ready. All right, thank you for that introduction. Yeah, to give a little bit of context, um, we're so excited to be sharing what's been happening in our downtown streets for this last year. I mean, um, you know, right when the pandemic started was when the um, construction started taking off and through a pandemic, through fires, through smoke in the air, all of this construction has continued to move forward. So Daniel Lott, so people probably don't know, K2 Development is the main developer on this project. So Market Center Apartments and the streets are reopening and they have a really good partnership with the city of Reading to reopen these streets. Now, Daniel Lott is not able to join us today and I wasn't able to get him in the video, but Steve Bade and I took really good, um, it's gonna be a perfect virtual tour and a, a first hand look and walk around on these streets before they reopen. So I will share that with you guys right now. Awesome. <clears throat> Let's go over here. Let's share this. Can you guys see this? Yes. All right. Hello everyone, I am Steve Bate. I am the City of Reading's Deputy City Manager. I oversee the Housing Division and I also am the Director of Economic Development and Innovations. Uh, in re respect to downtown, I am the uh, Community Development Downtown Liaison. And we are out here today in, in the heart of downtown and uh, we're going to showcase uh, what uh, has been going on the last couple years in regards to the downtown streets, uh, some projects that are around in this area and adjacent to this area. And I want to apologize that I wasn't able to join you on this Saturday afternoon, but I thought I'd give you a uh, video clip of what's going on in downtown and what you can look forward to as a community. So th this is really kind of a neat area right here. If you think about it, I just so uh, some background, I grew up here in Reading. I was born in 1970 so I've been here and you know back uh, in, in the day my my grandma used to bring me uh, you know as kids down here and you know Sim Nathan was uh, off to the you know to the left of me you know and ahead of me would have been the old Rite Aid uh, and and the ice cream parlor that was adjacent to that and so you look around now and you start seeing how this area has transformed from that pedestrian mall that uh, that that Larry Morgan was referencing and you know what it is today and, and how we are are advancing our community with a, a different feel and and the activities that's going to bring downtown so it's really neat just to, to see the full history and then also to be a part of it and actually see uh, it come to life when i was a kid it, it, you know it was uh, you were in a mall uh, and and there were some active spaces but it wasn't there's only a few spots you can actually go to uh, you know it just never really took off and so that was disappointing i would say at the, at the time uh, as as the mount shasta mall took on its flavor but you know it i think the cool thing for me is yeah it, it, it didn't work uh, we as a community learned from that and now we're applying what we know to recreate this space and i think a lot of people are going to be super excited about what they get to um, experience in downtown i started in downtown underneath uh, larry morgan's guidance back in, in in around 2006 2007 i was you know, really lucky to get selected by Larry to assist him in downtown redevelopment activity. So Larry and I worked in downtown. I learned from Larry, uh, you know, what what was going to transpire in our downtown. And we had that first, you know, efforts with the mall roof removal and creating a pedestrian plaza, you know, worked at some capacity. Uh, then redevelopment died. And I guess Larry decided to retire. And so then they handed that over to me to, to kind of take things on. And so basically Larry left and all the money left and we had to get creative and so we needed to really keep our downtown specific plan active and we wanted that to be a plan that was not going to just sit on a shelf and so we um, made every effort to create partnerships with developers to keep downtown active and to transform as in that specific plan 
another uh, plan that was taken on in the background was the community downtown community-based transportation plan and that was key because that transportation plan in tandem with the specific plan really wanted us to open up the grid in downtown you know we, we didn't want downtown to be auto oriented we wanted it to be uh, a mix of uses where you have bikes you have pedestrians you have you know access to transit you wanted to create this vibrant space that invited all types of people into downtown not just automobiles passing through we want to create it as a destination and so i've had the the uh i guess fortitude the the luck the blessing to actually have partnerships that we were able to go out and get additional funding from the state and be creative with that money and that's what has been infused into downtown to create the streets to create market center and to create some of the new buildings and infrastructure that's going on around in downtown we're we're right here on 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 butte and market street i'm on the i guess you basically refer to as the southwest corner uh you know you can hear some of the background noise uh, that has changed you know today back in 2008 2009 you know larry uh and i were here and this is really that second roof removal project that we're standing in front of right now where you see <clears throat> you know you would have seen some pillars that had stained glass on them that were just remnants left over from that mall roof structure and they kind of became an albatross around our neck that just wasn't leaving and but we tried to make the best of it during that time and it really is like a, I guess it's a visual um, kind of relief now that those are gone and there and those columns and that stained glass has been repurposed reused and now you're getting street lights you're getting pedestrian intersections you're getting art with a steam whistle project you have you know new rusted elements by potted plants and and truncated domes and you know we're looking at pavers mixed with uh, broken up asphalt or broken up concrete it's just a it's a different feel down here you know it took us you know we're looking at like 12 years now to get to this transformation period but you can just visually see how uh, our patients and kind of our uh, drive have gotten us where we are today. And so we're pretty excited about where we're headed. So I'm in right now is uh, actually a common space for the tenants at Market Center. Uh, this building is uh, one of the reasons why some of the develop this redevelopment activity occurred in downtown. The city partnered with K2 Development and uh, CRDC to get the funding, which is a combination of funding from the state and the federal government. Uh, this the funding basically is the foundation of is really a, on, on an affordable housing project here we have 82 residential units that are combined with first floor commercial space that is going to be occupied by retail and commercial uses this space here is really going to use an amenity for the tenants to really utilize this space as a common space it has some nice outdoor planning boxes it'll have wind sails above it to create a shade element and you can overlook the street so this project the funding sources that we got are is affordable housing sustainable communities funding and we received 20 million dollars from the state in order to make this happen now that's only 20 million dollars that goes toward a portion of this building and then about 8 million towards the street so beyond that you had another 32 million dollars invested in this building for a total of 42 million dollars to make this space happen today and it's really a nice uh, uh, development partnership that the city was able to really uh, kind of develop over time to make it happen so it doesn't just happen overnight it happens over many years to get to this point and this building is just it's fabulous I mean it has balconies you can see those on the on the units where the tenants can come out and overlook this common space they can interact with the street um, so it's really an active space that puts eyes out here in the common space eyes on the street and really are becoming like a functional uh, plus in downtown so here we are I mean we're on the second floor of that market center building up in that common space and the nice here we are this perspective of you can see the Sim Nathan building behind me you can see some of those things I pointed to earlier and you can see the street improvements and how they look from this uh, the second floor view and and really how that is going to create eyes on the street for this development the other thing I like here is you're able to see some of the skyline changes you know you can see the courthouse off in the distance which is you know it's come up out of the ground and looking great you can see some of the the maybe you'll see in the lorenz 
uh, hotel out there in the distance. But really more importantly, you see how Market Street is transforming and transforming not just for today, but I mean, we anticipate it's a, this is a long-term investment and a long-term plan to really be a, a really um, anchor in our, in our community and that destination place we all kind of crave for. So right now we're in underneath that Market Center building and this is the underground parking facility you know back in the day you would remember this being underneath dickers and at that time we had about probably i think there's 145 spaces this space has changed you know the city of reading in partnership uh, with our funding sources we reacquired the right of way along market along butte and yuba street which took away some of the space of the parking facility so it's a smaller footprint for the parking facility but now we have about 83, 84 parking spaces uh, in this facility. And so it is open to the public. There are 33, 32, 33 spaces available to the tenants of Market Center. The rest, the other 50 spaces are available to the public. And those are available to the public 24 hours a day, seven days a week at a dollar per hour with a maximum rate per day of $8. And so you're looking, I mean, there's plenty of parking down here. Uh, it's easy to access under Butte Street. Uh, some of the newer features you're gonna find out in a, in a parking facility today is that we have bike lockers. And within these bike lockers, you're really starting to see, uh, you know, this is space that another type of, of, of mode of transportation can participate with a new facility. And you can lock your bike up in this facility and it'll be nice and safe. Uh, uh, protected and so we have a few of these within this parking structure uh, that are that are available to the community and to the tenants so anyway it's a, it's a great um, representation of how parking structures are changing and how we have transformed with it so here we are at the uh, Butte and Pine Market Alley and what you can see from the street improvements that have been completed you're seeing a raised intersection with pavers a, a nice variety of pavers and colors uh, they're blending in with uh, the rusted elements with the truncated domes uh, you have nice pedestrian lighting that's been incorporated and really uh, designed by reu it's been a great element to add into our streets you've seen some of the landscape improvements uh, as you walk along you know you can see where the building uh, the market center building really the storefronts when they become activated they're really going to interact with the street well you're going to see some outdoor dining spaces created just really creating this atmosphere or this activity for the community to come down and enjoy this space uh, other elements you might see um, as we get to the core you'll see some rusted planter boxes that are really more of a, a safety item they're really facilitating uh, as, as like a bollard uh, but it gives us kind of a, a softened escape by having those plants inside that rusted element uh, there's some nice concrete benches so people can sit and hang out and enjoy the downtown uh, which also incorporates all the art that's going on whether it's on a building or it's in uh, you know incorporating the landscape like the steam whistle project that's behind us so there's a lot of nice elements that are creating this as, an, as a destination it's going to be a place that people want to come down and spend time and hang out and really enjoy Behind me is the uh, Tehama and Market Street intersection, right in the heart of downtown. And basically how the street is going to work or being operated is you will be able to use the far westbound or the far west lane as you enter into this Market Street space. And the, just one lane southbound that'll take you down to the Butte Street intersection at Butte, you can either go west or you can go eastbound, or you can continue down market towards Yuba Street. There's a, some of the nice elements. We mentioned the parking spaces underneath Market Center, and that differentiation between, there used to be 145 spaces down there, now there's only you know, 83, 84. Well, we made up the difference on the street, and the street is really bringing in the parallel parking. So you'll head south on Market Street, you have parallel parking on both sides, which is adjacent to outdoor active spaces at the at the restaurants. And so it's going to bring some good close proximity parking uh, as you as you come into downtown and use the space. As you transition down towards Butte Street, there is a transition with Market where it does have an elevated uh, raised intersection and that is done to be more pedestrian friendly. There's no curbs on that type of intersection. And so you're able to walk and just be free with, as pedestrian access that space. You can sort of visually see it as you look down 
uh, in that in that intersection of, of Butte and Market. And so really, you can see how these elements or these amenities that have been incorporated in the street design are really coming together. And you know, in the next three weeks, probably you're gonna see traffic activating this space and not just automobiles, it's gonna be pedestrians, it's gonna be bikes. And uh, it's gonna be a great, uh, nice uh, infusion in our downtown. All right, I hope you enjoyed this introduction to the downtown Market Street and, and our street circulation project. I hope you've seen where we infuse some good um, kind of nods to the past with the amenities and also we're activating this space with, uh, you know, to make it that destination for the community. And so I hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any questions, you're more than welcome to contact me at the City of Reading or you can always catch updates uh, at, our, at our City of Reading website, City of Reading dot org backslash downtown. Thank you. All right. Wow. What'd you guys think? <laughs> that was great. Hey, that yeah. was great. Hey, be sure and tell Steve he did a wonderful job and uh, you know, portraying what's going on and where we're at right now. That's a big deal. That's a big deal. So he and uh, he and Daniel both, you know, just that's great. That's great. <laughs> yeah, I mean, gosh, to, to, it was so cool to be able to to walk around with Steve and, and just yeah. hear about where we've come from and to get that virtual tour. And I'm so thankful that we get to share this with our community. And you guys get it first. You guys are getting the exclusive sneak peek before anybody else. And I hope that gave a lot more information about what's been going on in our community. Yeah, awesome. That's great. Larry, you had to love that. He gave you a lot of credit there, buddy, and well and well deserved, I might add. Yeah, he, sells, he sells himself short. You know, he said he talks about how much luck was involved, but you've got a lot of skill, I'll tell you. <laughs> really? That's true. Uh, yeah, yeah you're his mentor. I can, he made that real clear, you know. <laughs> yeah. So thank you. You're well, welcome. listen, uh, speaking of Blake, who was just uh, was speaking, he's going to be our last speaker. When you have uh, – when you introduce something like anything, it's historical. In this case, Market Street, downtown Reading. You have the past. Thank you, Jay. Uh, you have the, the interim period from then to about 20 years ago. Thank you, Larry. And because of Steve and, uh, and, and Blake and Daniel, uh, we had the last 20 years up to what we're doing today. But we can't be left out. You have the future coming forward here. You have the future. And speaking of the future, uh, our, our one and only Blake Fisher is going to finish it off for us, and uh, he's going to talk about the future. Um, it's a pleasure to introduce Blake because not only is he one of our newest board members here at the Shasta Historical Society, but he's our youngest. And I won't, I won't tell you how old he is. You know, you guys can guess that yourself. But uh, he looks a lot younger than he actually is. But uh, he's a local board member now for the Shasta Historical Society. Uh, he graduated locally, Enterprise High School. He's a Hornet. And he's been very active, both uh, as a performer, actor, uh, in numerous plays, performances, activities, the Cascade, Riverfront, Shasta College, um, and uh, here at the Shasta Historical Society. He's joined us on a couple of uh, um, things that we've been doing here over the last couple of years. And so um, he's also now the program director for Viva Downtown. And uh, boy, they're lucky to have him just like we are. So Blake, the future, that's you, my man. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, thank you for that uh, lovely introduction. And um, thank you to the Shasta Historical Society for uh, hosting this webinar. I'm so excited to share uh, what kind of the future is looking like and what it's been like working and living downtown. So my name is Blake Fisher. I work for View Downtown. I am the program coordinator. I've been here for about a year now. Um, and what a time to join Viva Downtown at the moments where all of these years of planning and dedication to reopen these streets is happening. So I'm gonna pull up a PowerPoint and we'll kind of go through what's, what's looking like and what's happening. So let's go to <laughs> share screen. Um, let's get out of Downtown Mall. Do that. You know what? I may be the youngest, but I look like I don't know how to use technology. My goodness. Let's go right here. I am just going to close this and pull up that. All right. Can you guys all see this? Yes. Beautiful. All right. 
So for those of you who don't know, Viva Downtown is a volunteer nonprofit dedicated to enhancing the cultural, social, and economic development of downtown Reading. Viva's been around since the 90s and, um, you know, was really created to invest in our downtown that was struggling at that time. And some of the ways that Viva was doing that, you know, was creating events and reactivating spaces that, you know, were starting to be underutilized and needed some love. So something like, you know, Carnegie Park, uh, where the Carnegie Library once stood. Um, the Carnegie Library was torn down and so Viva Downtown created Market Fest, reactivated that park, and now you have, you know, the food truck park. So some of the things that Viva likes to do is, you know, reactivate spaces, but pass it off to people that are going to maintain it and set it up for the future. Um, Viva runs on, you know, our Main Street model, we're a national Main Street uh, organization. We go off of four things. So economic vitality, design, organization, and promotion. So we have a few committees that, that um, go through that. Like our Viva Downtown Design Committee is um, one of the committees that focuses on what kind of art and design actually needs to be in downtown. So for everybody that's tuning in, and I know you guys will have questions after this, I think a well-educated, well-informed um, community is what gets us to the future and to a stronger future. So if you guys ever want to know what kind of the big idea is and take the time to check it out, you can find that at the Downtown Reading Specific Plan, the Downtown Reading Community-Based Transportation Plan, and the Downtown Reading Parking Strategy. And those are all available for you guys to look up. And you can find that at cityofreading.org slash downtown or at the um, mcconnellfoundation.org community vitality, the latest, they'll have some really good stuff. Um, so that's cool right here. Now, I should say trigger warning. This is what everything looked like before a pandemic hit. So it's kind of, kind of weird to see everybody all together so close with no face masks. But this right here, this was our street fair that Viva Downtown was doing. And the reason I'm showing you this is because it puts into perspective what this whole promenade looked like only about two years ago. Um, and if you guys remember, you know, you had the Dickers building, you can see that right in the background. You have all these pillars. And like Steve said, these stained glass, um, you know, creations are being repurposed. And there used to be all these lights that were down uh, here. So those pillars had to go. And thankfully, we we're all to, you know, repurpose these. So you can see everybody, how fun it was to be on this block. Um, this is what it looks like from an aerial perspective. You know, perception and you have the uh, pillars once again. You can see those in the old historic photos that were being shown about those original pillars that held up the roof. Um, another one. So the reason I'm showing you this perspective is that this is where really the, the street is now going through. This is Market Street. Um, so you see the Dickers building, you have the IOF hall right in the background and some offices. So these stairs, one of the big initiatives was to remove it. And you can see in the midst of all this is the actual construction happening um, with those stairs removing. So we're going over here. Now, when we're talking about the future, we always have to you know, take notice of the past. This downtown mall was created. And one of those interesting things was that it was built over two of the oldest brick structures of Reading. So this right here is the IOOF hall. And you can see that in that video that we were showing. Um, Laura Chrisman, did a fantastic article on this um, for one of the covered wagons. So check it out um, and see what the IOF Hall is about. It's the uh, International Independent Order of Broad Fellows. Um, and this is what it looks like right now. So it's like, you know, roof gets removed, nobody realizes it's there. And now here we are with the um, IOF Hall. So a big difference. And then you have the um, Red Reading National Bank, which is now Wavelength. So, now going into the actual street construction, most importantly, we want this experience and this new main street to be complete streets. And complete streets are streets that are made for everyone involved. So that means that in this section, looks like we're going in north, you have the IOF Hall and the Market Center Apartments. Right here is very pedestrian and bike friendly. So these are raised streets, there's no curves that are going on. Um, so everybody's very, you know, walking by and um, has a really nice experience. And the biggest thing is like, now you have residents living in these market center apartments with families and you have all these new businesses. So this really is gonna create a beautiful environment with all these new lighting um, structures, all these new trees that are being planted. There's about 70 trees that just got planted in this area too. So I think that's very exciting. 
Um, right here, this is Butte Street in the midst of that construction. And then it's these guys right here who have been here for a whole year just pounding away at these pavers. And um, this guy right here, Darren, was talking about how important these pavers are because you know a lot of this is exclusively European. So with these pavers, if something happens underground with the infrastructure, they're able to unstitch it and put it back without having to do any major, major damage. And they look really, really nice too. So these guys are really the true heroes with a lot of this construction and getting it to be done on time. Um, we're going over to Market Center Apartments and I'm actually doing this right now in the Market Center Apartments. Um, it's so cool to live right here and to, you know, see all the residents that are experiencing downtown and um, we're excited to see all the storefronts that are gonna be put in. The market center in the midst of the construction, um, that's what it looks like after that. So big difference, fast work. Uh, this is, you know, the $20 million California state grant. So they had deadlines and you could see how fast of work they did. Um, this is pretty much its completion. This was right before all the residents moved in um, and you could see a better view of you know, how these streets work. So you have Yuba Street, you have Market Street, um, and you can see all the, you know, all of the rest of Market Street with that. Um, and this is what it looked like just recently. I mean, you have these new steam whistles being put in and the Christmas tree, which was moved from the old parking structure back into one of its original locations. So next to Christmas, you know, December, people are gonna be able to drive and walk right up to that Christmas tree. And REU did a fantastic job at relighting it this year. And you can see how bright that is for, um, it's a good crowning piece for the end of Market Street. Right here, these are the trees that got planted in downtown. Um, those are really nice. They're gonna, the reason why they chose these trees right here was because in the fall time, they're gonna give dramatic bursts of reds and oranges. Um, and also they chose these because they don't ruin sidewalks that bad um, or at all with especially the new irrigation system that was put in. And they're also going to be perfect for shade. And as we know in the second sunniest uh, city, we need shade. Right here, this is another perspective of Butte Street and there's the Reading National Bank. This is what it looked like really at ground, um, you know, it's phase one. And this is what it looks like right now, so you can really have an idea of what it's gonna be like once you pull on to the road. Now, we're going into the future. So downtown, in my perspective, is, is so different from the rest of Reading. I mean, it's closer together, it's very walkable, and we want a walkable community, but also it's a place, we're in the Reading Cultural District. And some of the most important things that we wanna see in downtown is more art, more color, more experiences. Um, because that really separates this area from the rest of Reading. So we're looking at something like this, you know, this is on the <laughs> redone alleyway right in between, you know, Pine Street and Market Street. This is done by the Chamber of Commerce Reading City Identity Project. Um, it's electric alley mural that you can see if you go back there. And once again, it's more experiences like this that gets you out of your car and go check it out and get a picture with it. Right here, the newest thing that you're going to see is the Welcome to Reading sign. That is another one of the Reading Identity Projects. Um, so that will be the you know, entrance piece when you get into Market Street. And then I want to make mention, it's, it's these people that have, have made all of this possible. So it's not only the planners and the developers, but the people and the hard workers that have hit their deadlines. So um, let's see this. So, Right here, you know, these guys are the artists that put the, this is Vincent Sacco. He's one of the artists that did um, the murals that you're going to see when you're walking down on the streets. Um, and he had his whole crew just come up and paint these. So I'm excited for you guys to go and get pictures with those. Um, and then Viva Downtown, one of our biggest initiatives is that we're gonna have downtown street music this year. And when the pandemic lifts, we want people to come on down and see our local musicians and local artists play on these streets. So that's something to look forward to. You have the downtown area shuttle. If you haven't ridden that yet, you have to ride it. It is a free, safe and reliable shuttle driven by the RPD cadets. So that's in your downtown community. Um, and my name is Blake Fisher. Feel free to contact me if you guys ever wanna get an actual downtown tour and see it for yourself. And we're so excited for what it looks like in the future. Blake, great job. Great job. What a way to finish it. You know, um, 
people who have lived in the Shasta County, <clears throat> the Reading area, can really see the differences uh, that, that have been made and, and the you know, presentations today um, have been just wonderful. Uh, the people out there that are watching, I know have a, have a better perspective of where we've been and where we are and where we're going. And uh, it's just the amount of planning, time, resources and effort that have gone into this uh, are pretty overwhelming. And you speakers know exactly what I'm talking about because you let us, you let us take a nice glimpse into what it's taken to, to get where we're at. So we have a question and answer period. Um, and uh, we have, uh, if we have questions out there, I see we've made have some comments. Um, the comment there, thank you for the tour. We thank you for the super program today. We have things coming in right now on the screen. <clears throat> and I can tell a lot of people are very happy about what they've seen. But if there are questions, our panelists are still here. All of them are here to answer any questions you might have. There are a few that I've, I've answered a couple of them uh, slightly, but if um, somebody is asking about K2 and what K2 is, uh, would one of you guys like to give a little bit more of an explanation? Yeah, that's um, K2 development. They are the um, you know developers that are working on these you know main projects. So K2 development is working on the block seven parking structure that is going up that new six story. And they're also working on reopening these streets and we're, um, you know, the developers on these market center apartments. So they're doing a lot of work, not only in downtown, but around Reading as well. And they, they're a local Reading company as well, aren't they? Yeah. So that's really exciting. Um, another question is, what is the target date for opening it up and allowing full traffic through Market Street? That's a really good question. Right now, you know, with everything that's happening with weather, with COVID, we're looking in in February sometimes. So we'll be sure that it's February for sure, but we'll keep everybody posted on when that specific date is. And we'll let Shasta Historical Society know because we want all of these surrounding businesses and the residents to be a part of that reopening process and be a part of history that's happening right before our eyes. Okay, and then one last question we have, or nope, they're starting to come in. Um, so another question is, will there be a water feature on Market Street? No, <laughs> no water feature. <laughs> but I could put a hose outside and we could just create a... <laughs> <laughs> that um, works. And then uh, another question that came in is, will parking change for the Historical Society? Um, and it sounds like there's lots of availability. I don't believe parking will change necessarily. There will be some parking spots out front. The parking structures are fairly close, so there'll be a little bit more availability of parking, um, but we will also still have the parking lot behind us off of Pine Street. Are there I, have a question. I have a question. Larry, what's it, what's it like, you know, being a part of this, seeing all the work that you prepped up and seeing it actually come to fruition? Well, you know, like, like I kind of alluded to, we, were, we had so much momentum going for a while, you know, from the mid 90s up until about 2007, things were really starting to, you know, gather momentum and gain momentum. And unfortunately, uh, you know, the economy kind of, kind of soured and things just kind of ground to a halt. And then as Steve alluded to, I didn't mention it, but, you know, shortly thereafter, uh, redevelopment was dismantled in California. And we lost that funding source. So, as Steve you know, uh, pointed out so so uh, correctly, we, uh, they had to be creative. And being able to get transportation funding and combine it with affordable housing money and so forth is great. I mean, I, I give him a lot of credit for pulling that all together. All right, we have a few more questions. Um, some, uh, Denny is actually asking, what a great presentation. Can someone talk a little bit about the development occurring behind the Shasta College building at California and Tehama? Larry, do you know anything that's going on with that? Are, are we talking about block seven? Is that what? Um, behind, it says behind Shasta College on California and Tehama. Yeah, so go ahead, Blake. You, you, you probably know more about that than I do. Yeah, well, Denny, you're probably talking about the Block 7 project. And once again, I want everybody to be able to go to cityofreading.org slash downtown. And um, what questions that we may not get to today, cityofreading.org slash downtown has all the information on parking, has all the information on the development projects that are going on, um, and timelines of what it's supposed to look like. 
Um, so that's very important. But like basically block seven is originally that, you know, giant concrete parking structure that's been removed. And with that project, there's a redesigned parking structure. Instead of having all parking take up all of California street, we're building up. So the skyline is going to be different. Um, and then there's going to be housing there and, uh, you know, more stores and retail experiences. So there's a lot happening with, with block seven. Okay, and then Justine is asking, she says, hi, excellent. What is the plan for security in the underground parking? Well, that underground parking is, you know, it's in the market center apartments. So this place is pretty well fortified already. Um, and it's very well lit. And um, so far being around there, uh, they, you know, they have the market center security guards walk around this place. And it's pretty hidden. It's kind of a place that not many people will try and get into. It's, it's, it's down, it's underground. So I wouldn't worry too much about what's going on. Oh, parking's, you know, $1 per hour. It's super nice. Great place to park if you don't want it in the hot sun. All right, are there any more questions? It looks like we've answered all of them, including a couple that were in the chat. Well, yeah, well, well, the biggest thing, what does the historical society think about being right in the middle of all of this? <laughs> Mike, question. do you want to answer? Go ahead, Heather. <laughs> no, we're actually very excited about this. Um, there's going to be more parking available for our visitors. We're going to be more accessible, and we're really looking forward to being able to, once COVID is over, open back up and improve our programming and um, offer, offer more opportunities and reasons for you to come visit us. Mike, do you want to add anything to that? No, it pretty much says it all. Um, I came here in 1962, and you know, before the mall, obviously, and <clears throat> the changes I've seen and the direction we're taking with the number of associations, organizations that are involved and the people has just been overwhelming and amazing. I've attended a lot of meetings like you have, have Heather, and uh, it's all come together in a way that this presentation has just shown a, shown a little bit of light of all that. But um, I'll tell you, the Historical Society has got its work cut out for us. Uh, but because <laughs> all that's happened up to today is history. And, and so we have that to work with as well as everything that's going to happen when the downtown opens up. Yeah. So, uh, and we're really looking, to, we're looking forward to, to partnering with other organizations and businesses near us, like Viva Downtown and, and um, uh, the Arts Council, um, you know, and just in working together towards fun programming that'll help bring people downtown. Jay, what do you think about everything going on? Oh, it's really, am I on? Yeah. Um, I love that we have the window here. It's like the old days of window shopping. You know, that's really uh, neat to have that back because we're going to have so much more foot traffic and the exposure is just terrific. But also, Blake, uh, I had a question earlier when you mentioned the artist. It, I perked up because I did some research for him last year or so, some old photos or something he wanted, and I looked at his stuff and I just loved it. Because he had a website and he does all sorts of graphic designs and stuff. And now here you say that we, he, I didn't know he was involved with it at all, but the Sacco is his last name. Yeah. yeah terrific. That was a great <laughs> score. Well, Jay, thanks so much for helping get some research to make those murals happen. Yeah, you bet. Well, you know, sitting through this presentation is one thing, but what's going to make a strong downtown is for everybody to go support our businesses, support um, the, the development, and make a point to come downtown and see what your community is looking like. And um, I really appreciate everybody coming in and listening and checking this out. And now it's up to the residents to continue this push and um, make this all possible. And uh, yeah, we have a beautiful community. I'm excited for you guys to experience it. All right, well, if there's no more questions or comments, uh, we'll, we'll close out the program for today. We are recording this program, so hopefully it'll be available in a week or so uh, if you missed any portion of it to view. Uh, be sure to check out our new website, which again is launching Monday at noon. Um, we're looking forward to hearing everybody's uh, feedback and comments about it. And there will be a members only section on the website that will take a couple more weeks to develop, but for all of our members that will give you access to things that the general public is not um, allowed to access and um, also things like electronic versions of our newsletters in case you miss one or 
Yeah, you can't find it and we're looking for some information, things like that. So we're excited to be able to offer that to you as well. So please be patient with us another week or two to be able to get that up and going. But thank you all for joining us today. And Mike, did you want to say any last words? Well, I'll just say this. I want to thank everybody and all the panelists for being involved, the work you've done, the people who showed up to uh, watch this program. And I just want one final comment. This presentation is now history. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thank, thank you, you everybody. Much. Have a good thank you to our panelists. Thank you to our attendees. And we hope everybody has a great rest of the weekend. Thanks, yeah. Heather. Bye. 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 Thanks.